Welcome, bike, you super flexy, super sexy people. This is the last draft strategy video that we are doing of this series. So far, we have gone through one quarterback leagues. If your picks one through six, or if your picks seven through 12, we've made individual videos for both of those. If you are in a super flex league and you have the picks seven through 12, we made that video last Monday. I will link all three of those down below. Today, we'll be wrapping it up like a little bow with super flex leagues. If you have pick one through six, the number one strategy in order in order to zominate your drafts. What we did was hop on to Underdog, and we joined a, a few Superflex leagues. So I'll be going through three different drafts that I did, pointing out the best strategies where things differ from pick 7 through 12 versus 1 through 6. In these three drafts, I was drafting from the 102, the 103, and the 105, so we've got some nice diversity in here. I don't want to take up any more y'all's time, so let's just tuck it in. Let's Superflex the traps. Tell you what, the intro just works so well with super flex formatted videos because I could just tell y'all to super flex the traps. Stop yelling. All right, so you will see one commonality between all of these drafts that I put up on the screen today. And if you are in the 101 through the 106 range in a super flex league, this is not the year to pivot away from quarterback. This is not the year to get cute. You don't have the clear RB1 overall in drafts. So there's no reason to pivot away from a Josh Allen, a Jalen Hurts, a Patrick Mahomes, a Lamar Jackson, Justin Fee Like you, you want to grab your QB1, a high-end QB1 if you're in a super flex league and you have an early pick in the first round. So I was picking at 103, it went Mahomes, it went Hurts, and I took Josh Allen. Now, this is not necessarily like a player analysis video, but if you just want the rankings laid out for you, we have that in our draft guide, positional rankings, we've got super flex rankings overall, we've got one quarterback rankings, and the easiest way for y'all to get those absolutely free is to go download the Underdog app so that you, one, can draft and practice with us, but two, they're going to double whatever you deposit on there up to 100 bucks, and it gets you the draft guide for free. So go deposit $10 on Underdog right now using promo code BDGE. You're going to get a draft guide for free, which has all of our rankings, anything super flex related, and they're doubling your deposit. So those rankings are in there. I took Josh Allen there. Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen. Cool. The 101 to 1 through 3. Now on the way back, the biggest difference I found drafting early versus drafting in the later rounds is my rule from the last video was that you want to leave the first two rounds with one quarterback and the first four rounds with two quarterbacks. That typically sets your team up for relative success. The difference here is you need to leave the first three rounds with two quarterbacks because by the time you get back to your pick at the end of the fourth round, that tier of QBs is there's no there's no floor left. You fell through down to the basement. Your QB2 is going to end up being Kenny Pickett. So what I did was kind of took a variety of avenues here. I wanted to leave the first three rounds with two quarterbacks. In a couple of the drafts, I went with the quarterback in round two and just cemented my first two guys. In another draft, I went with a player in in between and then took a quarterback in round three. So I went with Dak in the second. And on the turn back around, I got Nick Chubb, who was my RB1. Now, in this league setting, if you go to underdog and you draft in the Pomeranian, which is $3 only to entry, $30,000 to the first place prize, you start one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, a flex, and the super flex. So you obviously need minimum two quarterbacks, but you want three starting quarterbacks. And it's not as wide receiver heavy as a lot of the other drafts on underdog are. So I was fine taking a running back before a wide receiver. And I was fine even doubling down on that. So at the 410, I grabbed Ramondre. So I got my RB1 and my RB2. And the reason I did this is because in these super flex drafts, value falls all over the place at wide receiver. I think Ramondre Stevenson has a chance to finish as the RB1 overall. So I'm taking him at the end of the fourth round, knowing I could still get a good wide receiver on the flip turn. But the way I'm looking at the Superflex drafts is you leave the first three rounds with two quarterbacks, right? Which means you have another skill player. So by the time you get to the fourth, fifth turn, you know, whether you're the one, uh, whether you're the, you know, the 410 and the 53 or the 412, 51, whatever it is, you'll be able to get your pick of high quality skill players there. You're not going to want to wait for quarterbacks to fall to you there because that's going to end up disastrous. So as you could see, in four of the next five rounds, I took wide receivers. So we have our two starting quarterbacks and Josh Allen, Dak, feel great about that. We have our two starting running backs and Chubb and Ramondre feel fantastic about that. Then we went Cooper, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, and Tyler Lockett. Love that shit. I fucking love that. I can't get enough of that. Fill, fill it. Fill it. Fill the cup and chug it. And in between, you see that Jimmy G pick. You might be asking, what the fuck are you doing drafting Jimmy G? Okay, well, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If you're in a super flex league, you want three starting quarterbacks. I don't care how shitty the third quarterback is. You want a starter, though. The seventh, eighth round is where you'll be targeting that player. If you want to chance it, 
and try to let them fall in the ninth round. The Baker in the ninth round. I got Jimmy G in the eighth round. You could take one earlier. You can grab one in the seventh round. I got no problem with that, but I felt like I needed more wide receiver padding because we do start a flex. And Evan Ingram has kind of become my favorite super flex tight end. I know in the other videos, in the one quarterback league specifically, I was looking for Hawkinson in the fifth, Kittle in the sixth, Goddard in the seventh. Because we have to invest a lot in quarterback early on, it makes me want to go with the wide receivers in the middle rounds. And Ingram continues to fall really late. And I love the fact that he was just re-signed and he was extended. And he's attached to Trevor Lawrence, who is entering the prime as one of the prime faces of the NFL. I think Ingram's going to be a fucking stud for a couple of years. So I love getting him as my tight end one in the 10th after the team that I've drafted so far. So if you look at my team right now, I think we're well-rounded as shit. Like, maybe we don't have any super high upside wide receivers, but you're going to get plenty of production out of Cooper Moore, Terry, Tyler Lockett. So the way I'm kind of looking at the Superflex drafts right now, as opposed to one quarterback, is obviously you want your QBs early. If you are the one through six, we're going with two QBs in the first three rounds. If you're pick seven through 12, you're shifting that and going two QBs in the fourth round. Because if you look at the turn in the third, fourth round, on the back half of the rounds, you can grab a Wilson, a Carr, a Stafford, maybe a Rodgers if you're at the 107 where those guys are not available in the fourth round to you. So QBs early and often, you'll be able to get a ton of flex action, fourth, fifth, sixth round, grab another QB, seventh, eighth, ninth round. If a tight end falls through there, cool, you know, grab him. I like Ingram in the 10th here. Uh, I grabbed Brian Robinson just as insurance as my RB3. But again, like the strategy kind of, once you get to the 12th, 13th round, it's not really strategy. It's more so get your guys. But I think the first 10 rounds where you set yourself up for success, you want a bulletproof starting lineup. People underestimate like, they overestimate depth in redraft leagues. Depth doesn't really matter. You want bulletproof starting lineup. This ain't dynasty. So that's the way I attack this first draft. We will move on to the second draft, where we moved back two spots, and I was drafting from the 105. As I said to y'all before, Lamar Jackson at the 105, Mahomes, Hurts, Allen, Burrow went off the board. Would have been fine with Justin Fields here. It doesn't really matter. Again, this is more strategy than player analysis, but I took my QB1 at the 105, and instead of taking my QB2 here, which I could have went with Geno, in the last draft, I got Dak at the 211, which I felt good about. But now I'm like, all right, Geno, Goff, uh, those guys are kind of like the same tier for me. So I took Cup instead. He could have went with Kelsey. I don't really have a problem with that. But we got our wide receiver one, our high-end wide receiver one. I'm very much back in on Cup this year. And then in the third round, do I love the value of Derek Carr here? Admittedly, no. This was probably my least favorite draft I came away with. But again, if I didn't grab Derek Carr there... I would be starting someone like wildly uncomfortable at my QB2 spot, and I'm not prepared to do that. We are not doing it. So I went Derek Carr to 305. I was hoping either Russ or Jared Goff fell to me there at 305. Didn't end up happening, unfortunately, but I took the QB. You want to question over those guys that are available? Yes, I, I completely understand that, but that's just the way the cookie crumbled. It's the way the submarine sank. So we took Carr. Followed up with Ramondre as our RB1. We got Cooper as our wide receiver two. Aaron Jones as our running back two. So again, those middle rounds were all for flex. We got our third starting quarterback in Mac Jones in the seventh. Chris Godwin as our wide receiver three in the eighth. Again, Evan Ingram in the ninth as our starting tight end. Elijah Moore, Brian Robinson. But you're starting to see kind of a, a theme or a similarity. Now, I will say if we broke this up into like the 101 to the 103 and then like the 104 to the, 10, to the 106, you might even strategize further. Like you're seeing in the drafts, the last draft, I was in the first three picks. So it was easier for me to get a quarterback in the third round. That was a tier above Derek Carr. Now, because you might end up with Carr as your QB2, you might not be comfortable with that. And you might be saying to yourself, like, hmm, I rather would have taken, like, Geno at the 208 and then grabbed, you know, a Nick Chubb at the 3-5 or Devontae Adams at the 3-5. And you might like your team better that way. So maybe the earlier your picks are, 101, 102, 103, maybe the more you think about letting that QB drop to you in the third because you have an earlier pick in the third. But if you're the 104, 5, 6, you might reconsider and just start off with two quarterbacks from the rip because the tier of QBs available in the third can be shitty. It won't always be shitty, but it just kind of depends how your draft goes. So that's that's definitely like one of the differences I found with like the 102 to the 105, the difference in the quality of quarterbacks available to you in the third round. I still think the middle rounds all kind of stay the same. The strategy of grabbing your QB3 in the seventh, eighth, ninth round stays the same. But those first three rounds are really where you start to build the strategy of like the core of your team. So from top to bottom, we got L. Jackson, Derek Carr, QB1-2. We got Cooper Cup, 
Amari Cooper, Chris Godwin as wide receiver one, two, three, Ramondre, Aaron Jones, Brian Robinson, RB one, two, three, and Evan Ingram as a starting tight end. As I said, didn't love it how this one turned out. If I had the chance to redo it, I would swap a QB up for where Cooper Cup was and then just replace Derek Carr with, you know, I don't know, my my pick of Nick Chubb or CeeDee Lamb or Garrett Wilson or whatever it is. I would have taken a flex player there rather than a QB. And the last draft we have for today's video. And again, if you're enjoying, all I can ask y'all to do is hit the button that looks like this. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Best way to support both the brand and yourself going into your fantasy season is going to underdog because every draft is at least $3 and you win money if you win the draft. But every draft being $3 means everybody's taking it really seriously. The ADP is extremely sharp. So by the time you get to your actual draft come end of August, early September, like you are so fucking prepped and prepared for it. You're ready for battle. You will be in the trenches. You've been living in the trenches. Go to Underdog. Use promo code BDGE if it's your first time depositing $10 all the way up to 100 bucks. They're going to double it. Plus, you get our draft guide absolutely free via email for signing up on Underdog with our code. We've got the last draft here. We were chilling at the 102. We took Jalen Hurts. Could have taken Josh Allen. Not a big deal. This time we went with the quarterback. Uh, I, I think when I was on the clock, I realized that it didn't. It wasn't like that big of a deal because in my eyes there was Geno Rogers and Jared Goff all left, who are like the same tier for me. So three guys left, and there were only two picks in between when I got to pick again. And there was also Bijan, Nick Chubb, Jonathan Taylor, who I kind of look at as in the same tier of guys. So realistically, I was getting both a quarterback and a running back in the tier that I wanted. So I went with Geno because Geno is my favorite out of those three quarterbacks. And I didn't really have a differentiator for me in terms of like who I wanted at running back. So I grabbed my two quarterbacks. I grabbed my running back. And then as you can see, the next three rounds were just wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. This was kind of sexy because I got to stack Geno with DK Metcalf. Um, I love Calvin Ridley, as y'all know. So I took him as a wide receiver too. And then when I was at the turn, I knew that I wanted to target Tannehill as my QB3. Again, he's still going at the 7-8-9. This is where I'm attacking my QB3 on my Superflex team. And I'm not high on DeAndre Hopkins, admittedly. Like, I have Terry McLaurin ranked above him. I think I might even have Ayuk ranked above him. I'm not really targeting him, but I thought it would be kind of cool to stack D-Hop with Ryan Tannehill. And it worked out well, so I was able to grab that Tennessee stack. And then the next round, I got Goddard. He fell to me at the 8-11. Now, again, I told y'all I don't necessarily... Uh, love the middle rounds for tight ends and super flex, but I love Goddard and the fact that he fell that far and I have Jalen Hurts was gorgeous. So I was able to stack Jalen Hurts with Dallas Goddard. And for those of you guys that ask, I get I get these questions a lot. Like, do you like stacking players on the team? One quarterback wide receiver? Absolutely. Quarterback tight end? Absolutely. Drafting two players on the same team? Completely fine with it as long as the offense is really good. I never want to invest multiple positions into an offense that it's like it's just like a mid offense because a lot of the times that goes south. But if you're on a good offense, like I got no problem taking both the running back and the wide receiver for you know, the Bengals. It, it doesn't really matter like what team I'm talking about. If they're a good team, that means they're going to stay on the field a lot. Like if one wide receiver is catching a ton of balls, that also just means that they're going to be running more plays, which is also good for your running back, more scoring opportunities, all that kind of stuff. So fine drafting multiple positions on this multiple positions on the same team if they're a good offense. So I grabbed Tannehill as my three. I got Goddard to stack with Jalen Hurts, and then I got Tyler Lock at the 9-2, which was fucking crazy and probably the lowest I've seen him go. And what's even crazier is now we have, like, the super Seattle stack. We've got Geno, we've got Metcalf, and we've got Lockett. So we've got stacks everywhere. We're looking like a goddamn Pringle can in the second spot. We got Hurts with Goddard. We got Geno with Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. We got Ryan Tannehill with DeAndre Hopkins. You'll see stacking a lot in these tournaments. So this, this particular draft, the Pomeranian, is a tournament which means like there's playoffs at the end of the year and the prizes, you know, $30,000 first place, I believe 15 to second place, 10K to third place, a lot of stacks because there's a lot of correlation there, but I still like to do it in regular redraft leagues either way. So we grabbed Tyler Lockett as our wide receiver four and I kind of went hero, hero running back, right? I took Chubb in the third round, but I did not take another running back until the 10th round in Brian Robinson. So I was just looking for guys that I know will get work in their offense. I got Brian Robinson. I took Zay Flowers as my wide receiver five. I like all the hype that's coming out of camp. Rashad Bateman on the pup list. Hate to see it. I got no faith in Odell Beckham. So it's kind of feeling like Zay Flowers is automatically backing his way into the one there. Uh, and then I took a couple shots on some young, explosive, fun, upside running backs in Jalen Warren and Kendra Miller. So I like how this team turned out a lot. My RB2 spot is not necessarily the sexiest, but I'm rising on Brian Robinson. I'm okay having him there because he'll get, you know, 12, 14 touches a game. So we got Hertz, Geno, and Ryan Tannehill as our QBs. We got Nick Chubb. Brian Robinson, Jalen Warren, Kendrick Miller as our running backs. And these drafts go on. There's 20 rounds. So I, I stacked more. I was grabbing guys like Zeke and Jeff Wilson. So hopefully one of those guys hits. But 
wide receiver. We got Metcalf, Ridley, D Hop, Tyler Lockett, Zay Flowers, and Dallas Goddard at tight end. So I, I really like how this one turned out from the 102. So all in all, that was uh, three different drafts at three different spots. We had the two, we had the three, we had the five. My least favorite one was the 105. And I think looking back on it now, right, this is this video is as much about like figuring out the strategy as I'm doing it as it is coming into it prepared for y'all. So I think based on the five, I might switch around my um, my strategy going two QBs off the rip because the third round is a little bit more risky letting a guy fall to you there. But you guys also know your leagues. You guys have probably been drafting in leagues with your friends for a minute now, and you'll know if quarterbacks last a while, if they fall, if they go super fucking early, if you're running back heavy, and kind of dictate this kind of ADP based on that. And y'all will do fine. But I'm, I'm, I promise you the single best way to prep for your actual leagues is to get onto underdog and start doing these drafts because it'll become muscle memory. And then when you're on the clock, you're like, that guy shouldn't be there. He's too good to be there. That's my draft pick. So go to underdog fantasy. Link to the app is directly down below. Use code BDGE. Deposit $10 or more, and they're going to double it, plus give you the draft guy for free. You'll get to draft with us. Throw down $10. bucks. you will have $20, bucks, which means you can do six drafts. You shitting me? You shitting me? All right. Well, we're about to throw the end screen up, and if you missed any of the one quarterback strategy videos, go watch those now.